Hey, what are the Warriors? In this video, we're going to be talking about who's going to get the next big winter storms across the United States as we head towards mid-December. I'll be talking about track timing, location, snowfall amounts, and much more. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecasts, breakdowns just like this, and comment below if you've seen any sleet, freezing rain, or snow yet this winter. All right, guys, so we're going to get right into it here. These are the two areas I'm really watching, but some other areas will have to be watched for other things like rain and thunderstorms as well. All right, guys, take a look at this. This is Friday, December uh, 10th at 7 p.m. There's a low pressure system hanging out in the Rockies here, just lee side of the Rockies here. These thickness lines, they're kind of averaging the, measure, uh, the average temperature in the atmosphere, and you can see there's a gradient running right across the United States in that kind of the S shape. That's indicative of a nice baroclinic zone with nice warm moisture coming out of the Gulf and a cool air mass behind. This 540 line is your average rain to snow line in the atmosphere. And so watch this evolve here as we head towards the 11th in the morning. You can see this low pressure system deepens. Those numbers drop off a little bit. They get lower, stronger low pressure system. The isobars get tightly packed. That means windier conditions out ahead and behind it. And you'll see that you have snow developing now in the Dakota, parts of Minnesota, and even Nebraska. So some development of snow, a nice little heavy band. We're looking at the GFS. As we head towards the 12th here, the, the night of the 11th into the 12th, you can see that low pressure system continues to deepen. This thing becomes a lot more widespread. Overall, the snow is light to moderate, though. So we'll go over that in a second. But... You can see that there's decent wind here with those tightly packed isobars, a nice cold front. There could be some severe weather in the south. So this is something we're going to have to watch. So you head towards Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, maybe even Tennessee. There's enough warm air, I think, and also some really good lift along that front to support maybe even some severe thunderstorms. We're also going to have to look at the western United States as we head towards mid-December. There could be several storms that move into that area. Now, this looks like a classic winter storm. However, I'm going to show you the past few runs, something I put together. And we're going to overlap the past few runs of the same time period. This is at uh, 11th at 7 p.m. So this is the same model run, but several runs on top of each other. You can see that the first run, several runs ago, didn't even have a winter storm. Next one had a, a little bit one but really mostly rain in the Ohio Valley. You know, and then the next one developed a winter storm. It was right over Ohio, uh, Iowa into Wisconsin. The next run, even stronger winter storm, now in the Siouxland region of Iowa, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska. Next run, same area, just a little bit farther north, and even stronger. And then this latest run backed off just a little bit but it's uh, farther west again, or farther east again. But you can overall see where this is lining up. There's generally some consensus kind of within this region of the United States, at least on the past few runs. So that would place the low in kind of like the northwest Iowa, if you were to average that out, or northeast Iowa. And the snow in Minnesota, eastern Dakotas, up into maybe even northern Michigan, and southern Canada. Again, this is only at this time period. We'll see this advance here in the future. But some good bets for some thunderstorms in the you know, southern U.S. up into the Ohio Valley. The issue with this system, and we're going to advance it forward here in a second, show you how large and massive this thing gets. But the issue with this system here, this is at 11, 7 p.m. on the 11th. This is the storm system's energy, the vorticity in the atmosphere. This is like the lift in the atmosphere. It's not particularly strong. There's not a whole lot of positive vorticity advection. And you can see another wave here, one kind of right there, one up there. What's happening here is these waves are kind of stealing the energy from this one. They're all spread out. There's a bunch of different branches to the jet stream, and that's going to really inhibit, I think, this winter storm. Now, if this, if this all merges together and this is one wave, this would be a massive, strong blizzard in the northern U.S. and Midwest. However, because of these waves getting split apart, I think that's going to be causing a weakening issue with this particular storm. I, I, it could be very large and widespread because of this, but it probably won't be overly intense. 
except for maybe the severe weather down south. You can see the Europeans even worse with it. I mean, uh, weaker with it. You can see all these waves spread out. It's not particularly organized, not even closed off in the European. This is the mid-level uh, vertical velocity. You can see plenty of that in the south U.S. for the same time period. That's indicative of thunderstorms and potentially even severe weather. So a lot of rising motion in the mid-levels. You can see it's not particularly strong up here in the winter storm zone, around negative 10 or so. Nothing close to what the Northeast had earlier this week. Now, in terms of the air masses, you can see we have a decent plunge of cool air. Nothing crazy for this time of year. A nice ridge out to the east and a nice ridge to the west. So there is some cold air getting funneled in due to some negative Arctic oscillation. Now, you look at the 850 millibar temp anomalies, a few degrees below average behind it and several degrees above average out ahead of it. Again, this is the 11th at 7 p.m. Temperature is not particularly cold, but cold enough for snow. 20s and 30s in the northwestern and north central United States. 50s and 60s out ahead of this thing. All right, guys, so let's fast forward this now. This is the 12th at 6 a.m. You can see the low moves out of west Iowa up into now parts of northern Michigan, Canada border, and plenty of snow up there in Canada some wraparound snow in the northern plains, and then that cold front moves to the east and uh, delivers some thunderstorms. But you'll notice the 540 line is way back here. So that cold front, that cold air mass, it's moderate but not sharp enough to bring snow on that cold front. So that will keep things as rain for much of the east half of the United States. But look at we, as we hit towards the 12th and the 13th here. This low pressure system is massive now. You have a precip field all the way from, you know, Minnesota all the way out. It's almost Nova Scotia, the Atlantic Ocean, and then also in the eastern United States. So this thing is huge. And then you also have another winter storm developing here in the west coast. Like I said yesterday in the pattern change video, that you would see a big pattern change, particularly for the central and northwestern United States. So much needed precipitation out here. There could be a big increase in snow in the northwestern United States and the upper elevations. You look at the European for the same time period here, also indicates that winter storm, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, Montana. And then the winter storm out here in the Midwest is actually a little bit further to the east. The GFS that we were looking at and then Canadian are actually kind of following the Euro. So I'm thinking the Euro here has probably got the best track and it's Canadian and GFS have also been slightly weakening it. Uh, and making it look more like the Euro. So the Euro's tracking this through Michigan, making the most of the snow in southeast Canada into Wisconsin and Minnesota. So the way it looks right now, Wisconsin, Minnesota, the extreme northern parts of Michigan into the southeast, extreme southeast corner of Canada looks to get the brunt of this activity with severe weather and in the southern U.S. and out into the Dixie Alley. However, the GFS and the Canadian have been off and on painting a major snowstorm for Dakota's northern Iowa and Nebraska. We're going to keep that area under watch. However, I think, based off the latest runs, this is going to end up a little bit farther east and weaker than what the GFS and the GEM are currently saying. You can see that the wave as it moves to the east still spread out. It does improve just a little bit. You can see the GFS, it's a little more organized, one big piece of energy. And then the East CMWF, not quite as nice, but still a little bit less competition between the waves here. You can see as we head towards the 13th, 6 a.m., moves into the East Coast, that 540 line getting really close to that rain shield, but just not quite enough cold air, so it should be mostly rain in isolated thunderstorms as it moves to the East Coast. And then that, that warm punch, you can see it's really, really punching into the system. So snow actually, that warm punch might actually bend the snow northward as this system moves to the east. And so that puts areas in more like central Canada under the gun with this system. And again, you can see this is a massive storm, just a gigantic storm. However, due to that competition in the waves and the upper levels that I was talking about, it's not going to be overly intense in any one area. So it's going to be light snow, but very widespread as it stands at the moment. So 
while not, you know, maybe feet of snow, it will be widespread, but a few inches or so. We'll go over that in a second. You can see the northwestern United States continues to get snow on the 13th. And this is what we're looking at in the northwestern United States. It's this piece of energy, the trough, sitting off the west coast. That's going to deliver multiple waves of snow as you head toward Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. So be on the lookout for several waves of snow. And you can see the funneling of cold air. Finally, you get a ridge to the east, ridge to the west. However, there is a trough here. So it's not going to funnel in a whole lot of cold air. If this ridge was stronger, you would see probably a stronger cold blast in the central United States, but it's marginal. So we'll get some temperatures in the 20s and 30s in the northern U.S. to support that snowstorm. You can see as we head towards the 13th and 14th, still snow out in the uh, west coast, but it dies out in the east coast. That low pressure system starting to kind of die out a little bit. As we head towards the 14th, you can see that die out and continues to get snow and little tiny systems in the northwestern United States. Now, as I was talking about the AO, it's negative and it's forecast to be negative. And you kind of get this look on the left here where you get the more meridional look in the jet stream, more active pattern. However, the NAO is not really overly negative. It's neutral, which means there's cooler, drier conditions out in the North Atlantic. And that might, you now it's, you're not quite going to get the cool there because of that, but you'll get marginal cold air and especially in the Northern US. So here's the snowfall amounts by the GFS. Plenty of fresh powder out there in the northwestern United States from these uh, big waves that move in. You could get as much as one to three feet over the next uh, week or so in the northwestern United States through about the 15th. And then the GFS has a swath up here in southeast Canada. Look how widespread that is. That's like half of the southern east fringe of Canada there. Widespread swath of three to six inches with the core receiving 6 to 12 inches. However, I think that's overdone based off those waves we were looking at. This is the European computer model. You can see it's much further to the east and mostly in Canada, but you can see it's more intense as it moves to Canada with as much as uh, 12 to 18 inches in southeast Canada and then the northern U.S., 3 to as much as maybe 8 inches. The snow depth anomalies, how much above or below average over the next uh, couple of weeks here, you can see in the northwestern United States and West Canada, several inches, maybe even feet above average in the upper elevations. The northern U.S., where that storm tracks into the southeast Canada, slightly above average, a few inches, but mostly all, all across the country, we're, we're below average right now because of those warm conditions. So stay tuned, guys. These things are going to change quite a bit. This is still a few days out, so we're going to hone in on this, and I'll be making more forecasts if I see the threat in the future. Right now, I, the main threat's going to be in southeast Canada and Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the northern fringe of Michigan. The big question mark is going to be the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Iowa. At the moment, that's going to trend towards the east, towards the European, as the models have been following that. Stay tuned, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you soon.